So we're now recording and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, thank you everyone for coming today. Well, we talk about different children's assessments that we have available in EMHware. So today we're going to be talking about the CHIME as well as the MHQCY. And so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to pop back to my dashboard here. So the first module that we're going to take a look at is the CHIME. So I'm going to take a look at it through my global menu here. It's also accessible from directly within the client file. And as you can see, we have the typical EMHWare search screen here, but we do also have um, the ability to export the data in an aggregate level. Um, so you can get the aggregate data extract as well as formatted in the submission format for InterI by selecting this one. I'm going to go ahead and pull up one that is already completed here in the system. So I'm going to open up this guy. So um, also before we take a look at this, I just want to talk about a number of the different CHIME assessments that we have available in the platform. So we currently have the Screener and Screener Plus, the Community version and the Inpatient version, which come with the Adolescent Supplement. We also have the various DD assessments, and then we have the Monitoring Assessments for Inpatient and Community, um, as well as the Kinark Risk Assessment. So taking a look at this one, I pulled up an Inpatient version of the CHIME, and I take you for a walk through. So we capture the basic demographic information, the reason for assessment, whether it's a discharge assessment or their initial assessment and the questions will be appropriate to the reason for assessment. And I'm gonna take a walk through this completed one. So the various sections, all the fields are set as dropdowns throughout. Every section has a note section for you to complete as you go. Um, but one of the biggest things with the CHIME in EMHWare is the reports that come along with it. So this client, uh, this is their discharge assessments. They do have other assessments completed in their file, previous ones. So when I click on the CHIME menu here, I also have the adolescent supplement that was triggered. So if I'd like to complete that, I can click on it through this menu here if you've triggered it. But the CAPS and Outcomes report. So we're just gonna give this one a moment to load up. So it's going to compare my current assessment along with their baseline assessment. And as I go down, I'll see a summary of my scales and I'll see their results from their baseline versus their current. Same as I go through here. So the column with the B is their baseline, the C is their current. So I'll be able to see what was triggered. So as we can see here in the ADL, we had it triggered and it also identifies which questions um, and answers were triggered for this. You can go down and we have the cut points listed here and they are identical by color. So these are all green. So green is good. We've got our cap summary. So a summary of all the caps that were triggered or not triggered. So with our current assessment, we had a number that were not triggered that were triggered in our first. And on the far right side as well, there's a change status. So we can see if there's any change or if it's improved or if it has declined. We also have the CAPS breakdowns in here. And in situations like here, so in the family life and social integration, attachment, so this one's not calculated because the client is not in the age range for the specific one. And again, which elements were triggered and then in the assessment data, a full comparison. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Um, also in the Chime docs, so if you, uh, we have like the reporting reference manual, the specifications for the, out, uh, the output as well. 
Um, and then the non chi high specifications for the chine inpatient. You can, um, as the other areas of EMH where you can copy a previous assessment to bring over your previous answers, and then you can make changes as they are required to the new current assessment. You can also view the XML for it. Um, and another thing with the Chime is that it is integrated with the BI Solution Project. So in your program histories, I'm just gonna pop into a test client file here. On your BI program histories, there is the ability to auto-populate your client's needs from the Chime. So based on their answers, oops. Hopefully this one's got it selected. So when you have it on and we turn the auto populate on, on your BI program history, so it'll align with your assessments, you'll get this auto populate button. I don't have any assessments or any needs tied for this client here, but it would pull in all of the needs that were identified in the CHIME assessment for you. And are there any questions about the CHIME assessment module? Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the MHQCY and then if any questions come up for the CHIME, I'll come back for them at the end. So again, the MHQCY can be accessed through the global menu or through the client tabs. Um, for the situation, I also have another assessment that is ready to show you with the results from the reporting. So I'm gonna go in through the global menu and in here, um, we can search for existing chimes in the platform, whether they were completed by the client. The MHQCY also integrates with the client portal so you can actually have them completed by the client at home through the portal. You can search by their authentication or again, the different types of MHQs that are available. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my start date back here so I can pull up my ID. So we're gonna pull this up for our MHQCY4 to 11 female. Here, you can see how I can publish it to the portal. So we have the opportunity, just like with case data, to not only publish it to the portal, we can publish a parent assessment to just the parent's portal and the client assessment to the client's portal. Um, and accessible in the portal means it's gonna be read only in the portal. So if you'd like to share with them the assessment results, um, but if you make it editable in the portal, they can complete it and change, like modify and complete the assessment themselves from home. So taking a walk through, got some general information about the MHQ. Um, later, very similarly to the CHIME, one thing you'll notice as we go through here is that the MHQ is checkboxes rather than dropdowns in comparison to the CHIME. And we can find our reporting results based on the assessment that was completed in the MHQCY menu here for the specific assessment. So I'm gonna pull up the MHQ report. So we have our pre-questionnaire and we can compare question, different questionnaires to see the results. So I can pick my post-questionnaire that I'd like to compare with if I'd like and be able to see the difference between the pre and the post. It's gonna let me know also the dates of those two questionnaires. And we've got our comparisons here. So this one here is our pre, this one is our post. We can see the comparisons here with our functional scores. We have our table of what these symbols mean. So strongly agree, strongly disagree, agree, disagree, or neither. And then we have flags. So this we've got the pre and the post. So the left is our pre. Uh, 
our various risks are about the child and family, their service readiness, if there are any concerns. So we filter that by extremely concerned, very concerned, and somewhat concerned. So what items fell in those? And again, we've got those comparisons going down and the color coding for easy visual representation and identification. We can PDF or export to CSV. Um, but another piece I wanna show you is outside of the reports from the individual client's questionnaire menus is we have what we call the MHQCY dashboard. So we can set our start and ending date for our dashboard. I'm going to pick the parent questionnaire as my pre-type. You can filter. So if you just wanna look at folks in certain age ranges, or if it was the caregiver or youth or their gender to get your results in your dashboard for what you're looking at to do those comparisons. So when I do a search on this, I'll be able to say, okay, the average age of our clients based on my criteria above is nine years old. So we had one client who was five, two who were 11, you can see their genders, their comparisons between their answers with their functionings, with their pre's or their posts. their average scores externalizing and based on programs. So this is my one program. This is my other program that it was completed under. And then these colors, so whether it was conduct, oppositional defined or attention deficit hyperactivity. So these bars here are color coded and they're labeled when you hover over them. And then here major depressive is the green, the blue is social phobia. And then when I hover over as well, because there was only one answer for this, so the change metrics are not calculated because only one elig eligible individual had this completed. And it'll give you a walkthrough of all of those pieces. Um, and this is the dashboard that's currently built into EMHware. Um, but we are just finalizing an MHQCY dashboard that is built into our analytics module. So it can be accessed um, through there and it's going to have a lot more in-depth information uh, to look at them from the global level within your organization. And just like the CHIME, how it can auto-populate the needs into the program history from the assessment, we can enable the MHQCY to do that for you as well. Um, and we do have a question here um, so can the chime be filled out through the client portal at this time? No, um, just the MHQCY can. I'll just pause for questions again. Well, you guys are seeing if you have any questions, I also just wanted to show you. So in the report suite, um, there is a section for MHQ-CY reports. So you can run reports based on the report data, the scores, um, and you can also run them with de-identified data and de-identified scores, um, as well as the questionnaire data. So you pick the questionnaire type and you can get all of the data that was input into each of the questions, not just a global level. So this one runs kind of similarly to like the case data data extract and column format report. I'll pop into one of them here. So I can pick my start and end date. Much of my data in here is a little bit older. So if I run for the youth questionnaire, for instance, I'll be able to see their various scores for the sections for each client. 
or if we look at the questionnaire data. So we've got questions and the answers, zero being no, one being yes. And then for those that it's doing the somewhat agree, strongly agree, those pieces will be an increasing number from one. Um, so we have a question, at what point of service is the MHQCY used? Also, does it complement the CHIME and clinical process, or is it better to use one or the other? Um, so they, I think, in my opinion, and I'm probably not maybe the best person to ask for this, but in my opinion, I think that their their goals are very similar to, you know, identify the needs and risks um, and strengths for the for the youth that you're servicing or planning on service. Um, and you would utilize them at the same point that you're using your assessment tools, whether it's the CHIME or the HEDZED or the MHQCY, those, um, and I guess it depends on the types of services you're providing and the duration of your services, because generally they would be um, used at the start of service, but then also as a continuation of service. Um, so, kind of throughout the entire service delivery process, depending on how long you're providing those services, whether it's just at the start or the end, or if they're long-term service recipients, then I would think that you would utilize them partway through to be able to see those changes and improvements and make sure that your services, your service delivery route is um, staying consistent with what the youth needs. Okay, we don't have any open questions, uh, Amanda, but if there's anyone here that has any uh, further questions, feel free to ask. And while uh, we wait a couple minutes to see if any other questions come in, um, we do have another webinar tomorrow. Um, it's actually set as payment processing, but it's actually the contract module and payment processing. Um, and that's scheduled for 12 noon tomorrow afternoon. And you'll see both Jamal and I there as well if you join. Okay, looks like we don't have any questions, Amanda. Perfect, and if there are any questions that come after, you can always reach out to accounts at emhware.com or reach out to the support team. Thank you so much for joining.